All right, call to order the Beverages Licensing Authority hearing for Wednesday, March 15th, 2023 at 3 p.m. Thank you very much, Chair Califano. Uh, the first item on our agenda today is instructions for virtual hearing, and I will share my screen and read the rules of decorum. The city has engaged with community members to co-create a vision for productive, meaningful, and inclusive civic conversations. This vision supports physical and emotional safety for community members, staff and board commission members, as well as democracy for people of all ages, identities, lived experiences, and political perspectives. More about this vision and the project's community engagement process can be found here at bouldercolorado.gov slash services slash productive dash atmospheres. The following are examples of rules of decorum found in the Boulder Revised Code and will and other guidelines that support this vision. These will be upheld during this meeting. All remarks and testimony shall be limited to matters related to city business. No participant shall make threats or use other forms of intimidation against any person. Obscenity, racial epithets, and other speech and behavior that disrupts or otherwise impedes the ability to conduct the meeting are prohibited. Participants are required to sign up to speak using the name they are commonly known by, and, if, and individuals must display their whole name before being allowed to speak online. Currently, only audio testimony is permitted online. Um, I do notice some people in our um, in our waiting list have some initials on there. Um, at this time, if you could please um, rename yourself to your full name, uh, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, continuing with agenda item number one is the member roll call. And if you can, please speak your presence aloud. Member Absalom? Member Absalom, present. Member Carr? Member Carr present. Uh, Chair Califano? Member Califano present. Member Roberts? Member Roberts present. And Member Wallace? Member Wallace present. Thank you very much. We have a quorum of five today with all members present. Uh, the next item uh, under agenda item number one is the approval of the minutes from the February 15th, 2023 BLA hearing. Anybody have any changes or edits to the men and says they stand? Not seeing any. Is there a motion? I'm so going to make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. All right. All, all, all in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Carr will abstain. Member Roberts, aye. Thank you very much. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, continuing with agenda item number one is hearing issues, hearing agenda issues from a licensing clerk. Um, this is just mentioning that earlier um, today, uh, BLA members would have received an, an exhibit from uh, for agenda item number six, exhibit one, which is a further information in regards to the kitchen's application. Thank you very much. Um, continuing with agenda item number two is um, matters from the Boulder Police Department. Um, however, I do not see that Officer Denig is um, uh, is present. Um, uh, uh, Kristen, would have you? Did you ever were you able to hear from Officer Denig to know if he would be present today? I did speak with him, and he was planning to attend. So I'd like to request that we. Um, allow Officer Denig to speak uh, later in the meeting if he's able to attend at a later, later time if the board is comfortable with that. Yes, I think that's fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you so very much. Uh, similarly, um, for agenda item number three, um, I see that um, Mr. Nathan Dewey is not it's not present in my communication with him uh, prior to this meeting. I didn't hear anything uh, from him. So there is a possibility that he would not be present today. Would you like to circle back later on to see if he attends? Yeah, I think that's the best route. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Uh, continuing with agenda item number four is general public comments for the beverage licensing authority. Um, if any member of the public is in attendance to make comment for a future agenda item, please do so um, at this time. Um, if you could please um, raise your um, raise your hand, you can find that in the reactions option uh, within Zoom. You can raise your hand if you wish to make a public comment. Doesn't look like we're seeing any. Um, I don't see anybody either. And I also just see how Officer Denick just came into the waiting room. We can circle back to his agenda item right now. Perfect. Right. Um, good afternoon, Officer Denig. Um, I'm sorry to put you on the spot so quickly, but would you be um, uh, would you be available for us to call your agenda item now? Uh, yeah, sorry, I had uh, trouble getting on the uh, Zoom today. No, no problem. Thank you very much for joining us today, um, uh, Officer Denig. If you could please just state your name for the record, please. Uh, Rich Denig. Thank you so very much. Um, I, don't, I don't really have anything um, for the agenda. Um, lately, I've been working quite a bit on some tobacco issues, uh, which is sort of a side duty that I have. We don't have a dedicated tobacco officer, so um, we've been working uh, quite a bit on a couple of those problems um, lately, but uh, I don't have anything for um, the authority today. Are there any questions for any members of the board for Officer Denig? Uh, Member Absalom? Yeah, I just had one. I just was wondering if there's anything in place or is there any concerns around St. Patrick's Day this weekend? Um, I know that we don't have that parade anymore um, in town, but I was wondering if there is anything changing from an enforcement perspective for this weekend, uh, or, or are we expecting anything to happen this weekend is my question. I have not seen anything um, as far as any sort of a uh, special ops plan that's been put together. However, that doesn't mean that there certainly aren't some per, uh, plans or provisions being put in place, uh, preparations made for um, uh, the 17th. That's all I had. I was wondering if anything special was happening in town. Great. Well, if there are no other questions for Officer Denig, thank you very much, Officer Denig. Thank you. I'll be around. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Um, to circle back to agenda item number four, I did not see any members of the public raise any hands. So um, with that, we'll continue to agenda item number five. Agenda item number five is a public hearing and consideration of an application filed on February 15th, 2023 from Residence Inn by Marriott LLC, doing business as Residence Inn by Marriott, 3030 Center Green Drive, Boulder, Colorado, 80301. Robert McCarthy, manager, Kevin Kimball, manager, W. David Mann, manager, Bancroft S. Gordon, Secretary, and Catherine Rothweiler, Registered Manager, with a business mailing address of 610 Smithfield Street, Unit 300, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, for renewal of a hotel restaurant type liquor license. If you are uh, presenting for this agenda item, please um, uh, take yourself off mute, and if you're available, please share your camera, please. Good afternoon. This is Ryan Prophet, registration number 31101. And while I've been able to take myself off mute, I think um, you may control my camera. All righty. Let's see. I just get, uh, sent a, an ask for you. Thank you go. very much. Thank you. And then Mr. Fred Warren is also with us today. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. 
There we go. Wonderful. Uh, counsel, do you anticipate anyone else other than yourself and your client to testify? We do not. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Warren, if you could please state your name, spell your name, and say your home address for the record. You're on mute. Fred Warren or Frederick Warren, um, 6827 Hancock Drive, Fort Collins, Colorado. 80526. Wonderful. Thank you very much. If you could mm -hmm. please um, raise your right hand. And do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in the matter before the beverage licensing authority is true? Yes. And do you also swear or affirm that you or your employees have posted the poster at the premises for at least 10 days prior to today's hearing? Yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Great. And since you're represented by counsel, Mr. Warren, I'd ask if you both would be willing to waive the readings of the procedures into the record. We would so waive. Yes. Great. Thank you. And is there any conflict of interest or ex parte communication from any board members? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Wallace, no. Member Carr, no. Member Roberts, no. And also it's to state for the record that this um, uh, applicant is um, in good standing with both sales tax and liquor occupation tax. Great, thank you. And is there anyone here that wishes to speak to this uh, from the general public as agenda item? If you could raise your hand. I am not seeing any. All right, counselor, you may proceed. Thank you. Good afternoon. Again, Brian Prophet, registration number 31101 on behalf of the renewal applicant, uh, Residence Inn here in Boulder. Mr. Warren is the general manager for this facility. Um, briefly, uh, we are here today on a renewal, a late received renewal application. And just wanted to give you a little bit of information uh, with regard to uh, that renewal. Mr. Warren, while he is the general manager of the facility, actually they do not handle renewals at the local level. As you might imagine, Marriott has over 600 hotels nationwide. It um, has nearly 2,500 licenses, each of which are renewed annually. Um, renewals are handled through a law firm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who handles all of their renewals. Now, in this instance, that law firm reached out to the hotel either December or January regarding the TIPS certification, which, of course, is part of the required um, renewal packet. Um, they received those TIPS um, cards uh, back from the hotel, I believe it was January 31st, finished compiling a renewal application, and then had some difficulty with Boulder's online uh, submittal portal. Um, emailed Boulder on the 2nd of February in an effort to try to figure that out. Um, the deadline, however, was February 5th. Uh, they received um, a response back from Boulder on February 6th regarding those difficulties, and yet they still were not able to get this renewal packet uploaded. Um, after a couple of days of continuing to try, uh, they dropped it into a FedEx on February 10th, and that um, renewal then was received by Boulder on February 13th and uh, deemed late by, I guess it was about seven or eight days. Um, importantly, I think for your purposes here today, this isn't a case of the licensee simply ignoring its responsibilities or duties. They were trying. Uh, to get this done, but it was some difficulty, again, with the online portal. Um, and uh, that failure to be able to get it uploaded then resulted in it being late. Um, but with that said, um, we understand it was received a bit late by you. Our apologies for that. Um, and, you know, Mr. Warren, as I mentioned, is here today. He is the local general manager at the facility. He oversees both the residence in and the courtyard hotels here in Boulder, and he'd be happy to answer any questions you might have regarding their training. Everyone is currently trained, although one gentleman, his um, uh, tips training expired, I think it was about two weeks ago. He is scheduled uh, for an upcoming um, training uh, later this month, and of course, uh, they can and will uh, supplement 
uh, his training certificate at that time. Um, but that's all I have to say. If you had any questions for Mr. Warren directly, I would make him available to the authority uh, for any follow-up. Great. Thank you, Mr. Prophet. Are there any questions from the board for Mr. Warren? Sounds just like a technical issue to me. So um, uh, go ahead, Steve. I have a question for Mr. Prophet. Mr. Prophet, do you have any idea what the unique uh, issue was with regards to renewing online as it is it is something that is done by by other licensees and what, what possibly could have gone wrong with this, this, this uh, law firm? Well, my understanding is from having spoken to the paralegal um, who was assigned this matter that it had something to do, and admittedly, I have had difficulty with your online portal in trying to file applications and things like that. It's not particularly user-friendly. Okay. Um, but uh, what I understand is that the occupation tax uh, was renewed in a timely manner, but for some reason they weren't able to link the addresses for the hotel to the same, uh, I'm going to use the wrong terminology here, but I'm simply going to say the same account. And so when that paralegal was trying to handle the renewal of the liquor license, they had difficulties finding the address for the hotel and linking that packet. And that is what caused them to have to reach out to Boulder um, in order to um, try to get it straightened out. So Christian, did you hear that feedback or whoever needs to hear that? I did, thank you. I appreciate that feedback. And I actually worked with this applicant directly with their inquiries to our licensing online email and provided some direct assistance to try to get them set up on the portal. I would like to note that when this applicant reached out to us with um, the technical difficulties that they were experiencing, at that point, they were already late before they had even <clears throat> before they had even contacted our office. So you did get back to them before before the the uh, fifth or sixth, as it was stated. Um, I was in contact with that applicant back in February with their um, original point of contact. Okay, but anyways, so but but did have we made the issue easier for other people to use now, or, or what, what's the issue? We haven't had any other applicants um, have that same difficulty submitting a re renewal application. John, do you want to speak to that? Uh, certainly. Um, in our On our website, we do have a step-by-step -step guide for how to submit things online. And um, for the uh, online system, I believe it is step number three. There is a, a PDF with instructions. And when it gets to the point of locating the address, there is a section there that states to put in because we do understand that it is temperamental when people try to put in addresses so we inform people to just put in the number as well as the street name for example 1136 alpine that's the only information they would put in and they'd be able to locate their information because in the past this was an issue so we tried to put information out there on our website for people to follow that yeah i i, I sometimes have the same problem with the planning planning uh, departments uh, on the page Exactly, it's this. It's the same system as they use, so that's why we know that it was that that's an issue. All right, thanks. I just want to make sure that if there was any feedback, that Mr. Prophet, that you could give it would be helpful. I appreciate that, and and certainly in this instance, um, you know, I wasn't the one uploading this. While I have spoken with that paralegal, um, you know, I don't entirely understand uh, some of the issues she had. I would note we're going to see you again next month. Um, I'll give you that heads up. The courtyard renewal uh, was due almost exactly the same time, just a little bit earlier than this. And for these same reasons, it was late filed as well. And so um, I only mentioned that, um, well, A, so you'll remember us next month, but also B, I, I do think you mentioned the planning and development website as being sometimes temperamental and, and difficult. And as Mr. I'm sorry, John, I will absolutely butcher your last name. So I'll just say That's John just fine. <laughs> uh, mentions they're essentially the same system. And while someone who may work in them consistently or often uh, can probably find their way through them, those folks who are only filing renewals annually or using them rarely, 
you kind of have to relearn the system every year. And I can personally speak to some difficulties from a, you know, not from a renewal perspective, but from filing applications. But that's neither here nor there. It was received late. Uh, it was an error on Marriott's end. And for that, we do apologize for its late receipt. All right, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Not seeing any. Did, Mr. Prophet, did you have anything else you wanted to present? Nothing further. All right, at this point, we'll close for deliberation. Is there a motion? I move to renew the license. I'll second that motion to renew the license. All right, all in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Thank renew. you very much. Motion passes. Thank you very much for your time. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Bye, Fred. Bye bye. Continuing with agenda item number six is a public hearing and consideration of an application filed on February 23rd, 2023 from the Kitchen Cafe LLC doing business as the Kitchen, 1039 Pearl Street, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Hugo Matheson, manager, Kimball Musk, manager, and Jason Hine, registered manager, with a business mailing address of 1601 Pearl Street, Unit 200, Boulder, Colorado, 80302, for a renewal of a hotel restaurant type liquor license. I believe uh, uh, Council um, Bindfer, I was able to ask you to. Uh, there you go. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, you. Council, if you could please record your appearance and I'll get your clients sworn in. Uh, James Bimeford, registration 13142, appearing on behalf of the Kitchen Cafe LLC. And with me is uh, Ali uh, Payette, uh, who is in the administrative office at uh, for the Kitchen Cafe. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Council, do you anticipate anyone other than yourself and Ms. Payette to testify? Uh, we do not. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Payette, can you please state your name, spell your name, and say your home address for the record? Yeah, um, Allison Payette, uh, A-L-I-S-O-N-P-Y-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, 719 Wagon Men Road, Bertha, Colorado, 80513. Thank you. If you could please raise your right hand. And do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give in the matter before the Beverage Licensing Authority is true? Yes. Thank you. And do you also swear or affirm that you or your employees have posted the poster at the premises for at least 10 days prior to today's hearing? Yes. Thank you very much. All right, Ms. Payette, I'd ask since if you're represented by counsel, if you'd be willing to um, skip the reading of the procedures into the record? Yes. Great. And is there any ex parte communication or conflict of interest from any board members on this agenda item? Member Califano, no. Member Absalom, no. Member Wallace, no. Member Card, no. Member Roberts, no. And uh, this applicant is uh, both in good standing with sales tax as well as liquor occupation tax. Great. And is there anybody in the meeting that wishes to speak to this agenda item? I think it's the last of us, so no one's really here. Um, Councilor, you may proceed. Thank you. Um, very briefly, um, this was a late application that was filed late. It was just a flat mistake uh, by the Kitchen Cafe. Um, it, the cause of, which is not a real cause of I it, mean, there was a change of staff internally with the Kitchen Cafe and the person responsible for the uh, ongoing renewals uh, left the kitchen and uh, was replaced by uh, Ali, who's with us. And just, it was just a flat mistake and not maybe fully explaining the procedures. Um, the city of Boulder is great about communicating by email. And there were some emails sent, but they weren't forwarded to Ali by the, by the kitchen person, not, not Boulder. And uh, once this was recognized, uh, got it filed right away. There's a couple of mistakes that we cleared up and I think it's in Good standing now. The uh, uh, they've been licensed since 2004, and so I'm, my math isn't overly good, but it's 19 or 20 years that they've done everything correctly. They have another license in Boulder that was 
filed on time right before this, but that was before the person, uh, the employment change. So it was just a flat mistake on behalf of a good licensee and good standing that's done it right for 20 years. Um, so no uh, great explanation other than a change of staff and uh, Allie's now up to speed on the procedure and has learned uh, that the expiration date is not the due date. And I think that was the major, major issue. She understood the expiration date, but it wasn't explained to her that it's due 45 days in advance and just flat made a mistake. Great, thank you for that. Um, do we, do, are there any questions from Ms. Payette from the board? Not seeing any. Uh, Councilor, is there anything else you'd like to present? Uh, no, just uh, we're here because it was filed late and it was our fault. Uh, apologize for that. And, uh, um, but it really was a, just an internal uh, restructuring, not, not restructuring, just a reassignment of duties. And uh, this was Allie's first time renewing a polar license. And it was just a mistake internally. Of the, I don't think it was necessarily Allie's mistake because she was new at it. And it wasn't maybe explained to her properly. Um, but the mistake's the mistake. It comes back to uh, the licensee. And uh, I'm sure from the experience it will not happen again as, as their track record for 19, 20 years uh, demonstrates. Great, thank you. At this point, we'll close for deliberation. Is there a motion? Move to renew the license. Wallace. Member Califano would second that. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Renewal approved. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Okay. Damn, it's 3.30. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you again. Um, <laughs> continuing with agenda item number seven is matters from the assistant city attorney. I feel like I have the longer uh, agenda item today. <laughs> um, I added a memo into your packets just about the petitioning process comparison with our um, elections process. There are a few different elections processes. So I picked the initiative elections process, which is the matter or the way in which a citizen gets something on the ballot. Um, that was the most similar I could find compared to the other types of elec elections petitioning. Um, I just wanted to flag this for you for further discussion since we talked about it last month. You guys were interested or the board was interested in creating more of a robust discussion around what petitioning looks like for liquor licenses. One of the other things I promised I would do is reach out to other cities and see if I could get any feedback on what they do. And I didn't get a lot of feedback. Um, so I've been thinking about another option that I could do if, if you guys want more information than what I've given here. Um, we have a locker in our office that can go through different codes and just do a comparison to see if there's more in other codes. So that is an option if you're curious about other cities, maybe nearby cities or something like that. Um, but this I included in here just so you know, there's, I did like a side by side. I thought that would be the easiest for each of the different um, I don't know, I like tables, I hope that's okay, rather than just a bunch of words. And then at the end, I included some things that the state does as far as elections beyond what the city does, such as what has to go on each petition, you know, the laws explained on there. Um, and then I also included um, what we already send out, what uh, Kristen and her team already send out as far as licensing goes to the petitioners, just so that you can see kind of what, what's laid out already. Um, so yeah, so if you have questions or you want to discuss further, I just wanted to let you know that that was in your packet and we can talk about it more. And it's kind of a lot of pages, so sorry about that. No, there you I was okay. reading this earlier. I thought it was great. Um, the table really gives you an idea of what we're looking at um, with each component of this. Um, I guess my question would be around if we were to change this, would that be a change in BLA rules? It depends on what part you're looking at. Um, a lot of it is BLA rules. So that's why I kind of cited the rule citation under each one. Um, so the state law is a lot of the petitioning is for learning about the desires of the neighborhood, um, the needs and desires of the neighborhood. There isn't as much in the state law. So a lot of it is either Boulder ordinances and most of it is in our rules of procedure. 
most of the details. Yeah, the one thing I was seeing is the required number of signatures on a petition. There is not a requirement by BLA rules. It's, quote, a good sampling of both residences and businesses in the neighborhood. What is a good sampling? I think, I think Steve yeah, got I, 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 would just, I would just say that um, it's, it's, left nebu it's left nebulous on purpose, I believe. Uh, and, and that is, is to, uh, um, to leave the ultimate decision up to the licensing authority as to whether or not it was, it was, it was uh, enough or not enough uh, to sway the authority to, to make the decision um, that the, the person presenting the petitions uh, uh, wishes us to, 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 to make. Uh, in my research in, uh, decades ago, uh, I discovered that uh, petitions really only carry the amount of weight that the, the, the licensing authority wishes to give them. Mm -hmm. You can have a petition with uh, hundreds of people signing the petition, and you can have one or two people show up at the meeting and be in opposition to the license. And should the, the authority vote in opposition based on those people who showed up to testify, they will be held up, it will be supported in court. Uh, uh, because people showed up to, to uh, challenge it. So it wasn't really a numbers thing. You know, 700 people signed a petition, only two people showed up to spoke, speak against it. That has been challenged, and it, that, that was challenged in court, and it was the, the, uh, a license authority, not, the, not Boulder's, but a license authority's uh, right to do so was, was upheld. So um, I guess it, it, it didn't really behoove us to set a, a figure to make it, make it uh, 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 important enough to, to, to give it any more weight than, than it's just a group of people who were asked by the, by the, license, the, the uh, licensee, attempt, attempted licensee um, as to whether or not they agreed with them. And uh, that's all the information I have. But uh, I, thought it was, I thought it was interesting when, when I was doing the research that uh, as long as people showed up in opposition, um, we have the ability to, to, to weigh one against the other regardless of the number of signatures on the petition. Yeah, as long as you have a reasonable like decision. I think part of it too with the number is it depends on the neighborhood. Um, you know, when we did the reservation stuff, the houses are a lot more spread out. There's just not as many. Whereas if you're more downtown, there yeah. may be more. The one, one licensee that, that caused me to do that was when um, the Rio moved from its original location on Pearl to the corner location at uh, 17th and Pearl um, the, there was a petition in excess of 30% of the entire registered neighborhood in opposition to the license um, um, and was over 700 signatures in, in opposition to the license. And it was more than the, than, it was more than the uh, um, petition in, 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 uh, in, in favor of the license. And yet the, um, the liquor board went ahead and granted them the license um, because there were people who came and spoke in favor of the license. And so it works both, kind of both ways. So, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I, I was just wondering, um, this, the ambiguity there, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. But otherwise, I, that, I, I think the weight that we give to it is a good explanation. So thank you, Steve. Anything else for Laurel? Well, thank you, Laurel, for doing all that research. Yeah, absolutely. And if you guys mull over and decide you want to change the rules, we can talk about it. Um, I'm happy to do further research, too, as far as what other cities and towns do. Just let me know. Yeah, and I'm glad it was helpful just to see this. I bet it was for me, too. Thank you so very much. Uh, continuing with agenda item number eight is uh, matters from the licensing clerk. And uh, Kristen, uh, you, you did say something you wanted to, to mention at this time. Thanks, John. Um, I've got a few things to mention here. Um, first, I just want to provide some clarification around um, the requirements for filing renewal applications since that came up during the meeting today. Um, Businesses are encouraged to submit their renewal applications online using our portal, but they're not required to do so. Um, we know it can be kind of confusing to navigate that system, so they always have the option to submit their renewals in person, in the mail, or via FedEx or UPS. Um, we want to make sure that we're providing multiple options to applicants to be able to get those in on time. Um, 
So just wanted to clarify that. And then along those lines, we are preparing to present the updates to the BLA rules of procedure to council in April. Um, and that those changes will become effective immediately upon council's approval. Um, so we'll let you know when that happens. And as we mentioned during the retreat, we are anticipating a reduction in the volume of renewal hearings that we'll have um, for the board once those rules go to an, into effect and we have a little more flexibility for when we schedule those renewal hearings. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is just a quick update on board recruitment. So as we mentioned last month, um, today is member Wallace's last meeting with the BLA. So I just wanted to take another moment to thank him for his many years of service to the board and, and let you know, member Wallace, that you will very much be missed. I appreciate it. And I can't tell you what an honor it was to fulfill Kevin's commitment. We're very, very grateful, member Wallace, truly. Thank you so much. Um, unfortunately, we did not receive any other applications for that vacant seat, so we will have a four-member board until we can complete a mid-year recruitment sometime, hopefully in May. Um, so I know we're getting into the summer season, and we just wanted to um, ask the board if you do have any summer vacations or if you're planning to um, have to miss a meeting for whatever reason, if you could just provide as much advance notice as possible, we do need a minimum of three members to have a quorum. Um, so if we could have some advance notice, if that's going to be an issue so that we can um, let the applicants know and, and reschedule those hearings as needed. And that's it for me. Thanks, John. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, like, uh, continuing with agenda item number nine is uh, matters from the chair and members of the authority. The only thing I had was, Kristen, if you could beg city council to put us at the beginning of the agenda. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. Um, <clears throat> I've just, I've known that having to go in front of them before they scheduled it at 930 at night, which is not exactly the best time. Um, and do you know what date that might be that we go before? So we're um, trying to get it scheduled for April 20th, and uh, we are scheduling it as a consent item. So I'm not anticipating that any members of the board will need to be present for that meeting. If that changes, I will let you know. But as of right now, it's it's scheduled for consent. So I wouldn't um, ask any of you to be there unless you would like to. Laurel, did you want to add anything to that? I was just going to say consent and consent items if we are able to get in on consent. And the council can pull it off. It is on consent. Consent is the one of the first items that goes through. So if you do decide to come, we won't be there, hopefully, until 930. Could you explain what the difference is there um, between consent versus another process? Yeah, Christian, do you want me to, or, or would you like to? Yeah, if you don't mind, well, thank you. Yeah. Um, so there's two different types of agendas that kind of go through. The regular agenda is similar to what you see here. It's got public hearings, it's got ordinances for consideration, kind of the longer items. Um, and then before that is what they call a consent agenda. And it's kind of similar to what we have here with our minutes. Um, it's a list of things that they can just approve on one motion. Um, and the idea there is that they're seeing it and they're approving it um, and they can pull something out and put it down for like more of a robust discussion. They call it a consent agenda. But the idea here is that they just vote on it once and we're done. And so there's certain things based on the rules that go through consent. Our BLA rules of procedure is a resolution instead of an ordinance, meaning it's not being turned into our code, it's not being turned into law, it's just they're approving our um, rules. And so because that's not an ordinance technically, then they put it on the consent or we're asking them to put it on the consent. Yeah, and so there's a bunch of rules about what goes where. Um, and usually what happens with consent agendas too is ordinances, so code changes, such as our special fee changes, um, has to be go before council twice, one of them on consent agenda, and then the next one as a public hearing. And a public hearing is where the public can come and comment on it, and there's more of a discussion, kind of like our public hearings here. Yeah. Thank you. That's helpful. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, so Matthew, I wouldn't bother going to this one at all. I'd go to go to this go to the second reading. They'll let you know if they pull it off of the consent, right? And then we'll know in advance. Okay, that's good. Yeah, we'll know in advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they what they do is they have like a scheduling meeting in advance and they talk about each of these items 
yeah, so that's how we'll know whether or not it's going to go forward on the 20th. Great, thank you. Anything else from any of the board members? Well, one thing I was going to say, uh, it, it, I, how important I think it is for um, the uh, uh, BLA to get back into meeting in person. Um, one of the things that I um, have always been aware of in the course of the many, many years of, of service on the liquor authority is a, a, a big portion of our ability to make a difference within the liquor uh, community is perceived rather than actual. And um, that perception is enhanced by meeting with the uh, uh, licensees in person rather than uh, take them taking 10 minutes off of their day and coming online and, and seeing us. And not only that is that is only one of the many reasons why I think it's important for the BLA to, to, to convene in person, both among with the, the members and, and, the, and the licensees. And uh, it's it's uh, I, I think you run the risk of, of causing uh, um, needless um, harm. Now, I think that as we go forward, and this is for the, 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 uh, uh, the new members or members who might be relatively new, it, it's um, your agendas right now are really short. Um, and they're short because there's, there's little to do and there's little to do because we're coming off of the pandemic. As we move forward and more licensees begin to apply for license to fill the vacant locations, uh, which have not opened, which closed and did not open, which they absolutely will, um, because the demand is 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 coming back uh, uh, slowly, but but it's coming back. Um, the the violations will start to occur, and your ability to to uh, educate everybody and, and and do what the main job of the of I see the liquor authority to do. Which is the, is to represent the community in, in keeping us safe, um, and keeping everyone safe, and um, I think doing that in person carries much more weight than doing it uh, online. That's my opinion. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks again for your service, Steve. Um, anything else from any of the other board members? I'll just say thank you to Steve. I learned a lot from you um, over these years being on the other side as the um, president of the RHG for so many years. So thank you so much. And um, with that, I would make a motion to adjourn. I second. All in favor say aye. Member Califano, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Member Wallace, aye. Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Thank you, everybody. We are adjourned at 3.44 p.m. And I think the city of Boulder is in great hands. I think you, you have a great BLA uh, board and you guys are gonna do great work.